I got a fun fact for you. Okay. You know the bands Kansas and Boston? Yes. Do you know the people from Boston were actually from Kansas and the people from Kansas are actually from Boston? I did not know that. <laughs> I'm really just messing with you. <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Some Men's Comics, and this, of course, is that weekly bolo show. That's right. We're talking about new comic book day. We're talking about those first appearances, those Reader Buzz books, that variant buzz, and, of course, Jack's long-term play. Now, I will tell you one fun fact. Whenever you do hear Wayward Son from Kansas, you cannot help but think of Sam and Dean Winchester, and we are talking supernatural. But enough of that. We put some pretty big announcement on social media today didn't we jack that's right today's been a great day for the simple men's comics team um as we made an announcement that we have partnered with a retailer the 616 comics uh and the 616comics.com uh, as well as their owners john and erica to form a brand new co-op to release some exclusive variants uh, to the comic community. And we've talked about that we were going to get involved with some simple men's comics branded comics and uh we are bringing the first one to you guys. And again, we're trying to do something different. We're trying to uh, bring you guys titles and artists that we enjoy. And we feel like we hit the nail on the head with our very first release coming from Boom Studios and writer Tom Taylor, his very first creator owned series. We bring you Seven Secrets by heavyweight cover artist Jung Young Yoon, who's doing the uh, exclusive variant for us right here. Um, again, you may recognize his artwork from some of these high ratio Marvel variants that he's done, as well as some uh, Flash cover B variants for DC Comics. So we're talking a big two cover artist bringing his uh, work right here to Boom Studios and the exclusive variant for this brand new series from Tom Taylor. Limited to 500 copies, $24.99 a copy, and they are available at simplemanscomics.com as well as the 616comics.com. This Saturday, the sale begins at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This Saturday, that's July 11th, they go on sale. And again, limited to just 500 copies, so don't sleep on this one. This is going to be a big release from Boom Studios. Yeah, we're super excited about this first one in the project. I think Jung Young knocked this one out of the park. We couldn't be more happy with the cover. And we're so happy to partner with the 616 Comics. And we also put links to both Simple Man's Comics as well as 616 in the description of this video. So make sure you check that out this Saturday, 7-11 at 2 p.m. Eastern. But what you guys are all here for, we're talking about that bolo list, right? We're talking about all those great comics for new comic book day. This isn't just our list. We talk about it. it is your list, what the buzz has been about, but we're going to get into it right now, starting with those first appearances. And unlike last week, we actually do have some first appearances this week. We are going to start with Flash number 757. We get that first appearance of Legion of Zoom. Yeah, now this is a team appearance and a villain team appearance. So you got to kind of look at this as probably a minor first appearance. But I have to say, The Flash is one of the best developed rogues galleries. And it's continued to expand throughout this modern kind of post-rebirth run. So I kind of like this team. I, I think Zoom is a character that has been really popularized through the CW television show. So I kind of like the idea of a, uh, a, a Legion of Zoom team. Certainly the Legion of Doom is a team that has been talked about a lot by people who have uh, kind of clamored to see that on the big screen. So this is one that you never kind of know, but either way, the Flash has been a great series. The cover Bs have been amazing. We mentioned uh, Yoon doing those cover Bs. Now they've got Inja Lee doing them. So this has been a great, a great run altogether. I often talk on here how much I love that Flash series. So if you haven't been reading it, definitely pick it up. Sad to see Josh Williamson's arc is ending here soon, but either way, one of the first appearances this week. And the next one we're talking about is that Batman Adventures Continues number two. We get a first appearance of Sonny. Yeah, and this one's a tough one to judge, right? Sonny is an apprentice of Deathstroke. Um, it comes in the Batman Return series, so you're talking about kind of maybe Elseworld animated um, kind of universe. But at the same point, Harley Quinn came from there. So you sit there and you go, um, well, you know, this appearance may be more minor. We may at best get an animated movie appearance from this character. Who knows? Uh, maybe, maybe the character shows up in the animated television series that has been talked about rebooting. Um, but 
I, I don't think you can think that small. This is one that's going to be interesting to see if down the road there's something here. This is one of those ones to me, Brian, is a grab, throw in the short box, hold and see what happens because uh, you never do know. Um, and certainly people did not think Harley Quinn was going to be anything when she first appeared in that issue. Yeah, another thing is also our channel sponsor, Frankie's, has that kick-ass Peach Momoko yes. variant for this. Unfortunately, if you're trying to get it, it's already sold out. But if this character does pop off, you know that one might be a good one to have. Yeah, stay tuned for Frankie'sComics.com because they're sure to have more coming from Batman Adventures as well as Peach Momoko on the site. Then the last one we're talking about in first appearances this week is that Empire fantastic four number zero where we get the first appearance of the profiter yeah and this is one full disclosure we've talked about this i'm not reading empire i really don't know much about this character um they brought a lot of new characters into the world of fantastic four and i will admit that i was buying up some fantastic four issues when they kind of came back from marvel i, I was looking at a lot of whether it was prodigal son i remember um, there was a few other villains that i was grabbing none of these have come to fruition now it doesn't mean they're not going to come to fruition at some point but it, it tends to kind of sour me on getting excited about uh, Fantastic Four f characters. And, you know, part of me says, well, these characters could play out in the movie franchise coming up. But at the same point, fans are clamoring for those classic characters like Doctor Doom and uh, so on and so forth. So I think that you're more likely to see Doom Galactus uh, play out in the short term rather than some of these more modern characters. Um, but again... We've been telling people, if you're reading any of these Empire stories, if you're into the Empire thing, let us know, because it is missing us so far. But, uh, you know, we're always open to new opinions. Yes, and we have gotten some great comments on those. Some people that have edged me in the direction. Like I said, I'll probably read the Empire main story arc, but we always say, buy what you like on this channel. And you talk about how you're not a big Spider-Man fan for that regular Spider-Man comic. I'm kind of that way with Fantastic Four, so it kind of... Yeah, but I will pick up those Empire main storyline issues once they're coming out. But again, let us know if you guys bought this and what do you think about this, this first appearance of Profit Air. That wraps up the first appearance section and we're going to roll right into that reader buzz. And kicking us off for the reader buzz, we get that Batman number 94. Seems like whenever a new Batman issue comes out right now, it is definitely on this list in one section or all the sections. And this was another issue that I definitely enjoyed reading. Yeah, another great read. Another set of amazing covers. Um, you get, you've got the cover A, which definitely plays into the story in the Joker War. Cover B, amazing Francesco Mattina uh, cover with... Um, um, uh, Joker as well as Punchline and a great uh, uh, design variant coming from Jimenez. It's a, this one is the Underbroker, um, certainly another character of intrigue that has been introduced within this Batman run. Definitely people were more prepared for this. Copies are out there. So this is still a cover price book. It's still a ratio or slightly below incentive, um, but definitely one to keep an eye on going forward. Again, we're playing this Joker war game, long game. We're not looking for these short-term flips. No one is going to be caught off guard with this Batman series, not since um, the events of Punchline's first appearance. Um, everybody is all eyes, all attention on it. So it's not something you're going to catch anyone off guard. Copies are going to be available, but this is a long-term play. Yeah, and this is the one that ended the current story arc, and we're getting ready to go. Next issue will be starting off that actual Joker War, although we've been having what we call prologues or tie-ins, but the actual Joker War storyline starts with the next issue. But that also gets us to the next one in the Reader Buzz, and we're talking about that Detective Comics 1023. Yeah, this one is a great cover, and I think that had a lot to do with it getting um, the buzz that it did. But also, we're seeing this residual heat from Joker War. Detective Comics is oftentimes not the focal point of Batman. Um, I think the Nora Freeze story gave it some attention, but other than that, for the most part, the only time people really are talking about Detective Comics consistently is when it crosses over and has some sort of storyline usually involving the crown. Or you got a jack cover. <laughs> yeah, usually involving, though, the, the crown prince of uh, Gotham himself, the Joker. Um, you know, when, when, when you know, he is involved, it, it's kind of going into Detective Comics, you're definitely going to get people's eyes uh, and attention on Detective Comics series. So 
a lot of buzz for this issue. I think that's going to continue. So if you're at all surprised by how Detective Comics is moving off of uh, stands, I would expect to see that happen for the next few months because I think the Joker War is going to carry on and carry over. And we've talked about the success within the Nightwing series, and I think that that's only going to continue. Next one we're talking about is Strange Academy number two. I like the first issue. I actually really like the second issue. And the whole time I'm reading this issue, I couldn't help but think of, I'm an 80s guy. I like 80s movies. But I was thinking of this playing out in some, like, supernatural fantasy John Hughes type film. Yeah, it's not, it's not often that we're talking about issue number two. So I mention that every time it seems like that we talk about one because it's something that's kind of worth noting, um, especially coming off a pandemic where there was no comics release for a long time. It'd be very easy for this series to completely fall off. But I think the reason why this one has the attention of so many people is it's getting the reader buzz for the exact reasons kind of that you mentioned. Um, also, though, it has the speculator collector attention because you're talking about new characters, it's about first appearances that debuted in issue number one that people now want to see. Are there going to be legs to these first appearances? And also issue number one is still uh, like a below the radar um, book where it's still affordable. It's still something you can get involved in. So I think that people are going to start reading these next few issues. And we talk about this. Look, we say reading is great for a lot of reasons. The obvious reason is it's fun. It's enjoyable. It's what comics were created to do. It makes you smarter. It's but an escape. I, yes, absolutely. And especially in this crazy world we live in today. But... On top of all of that, it will make you a better investor. It will make you a better uh, speculator. It will make you a better reseller because you can see where the publisher, where the writer, where they're going with trends. You don't have to just react to alerts. You don't have to just react to things um, like press releases and news stories. You're able to go and see where these things are going and make those decisions. Yeah, there's one thing I like this. One, this is written by Scotty Young, right? Great story. And you mentioned about people are speculating, buying it up. Yeah. I see that also. And we always talk about, hey, price of a lottery ticket, right? Yeah. But I'm also like, okay, are we going to see how this splits off? Is it going to kind of take off? Or are we going to have another Gotham Academy? Right. And I see I'm still burnt from Gotham Academy. I'm still a guy who's sitting with a short box with a good dozen Gotham Academies and a few one in 25 variants that I can't sell. So I'm sitting here like, is that going to be the same sort of thing? But price of a lottery ticket. So definitely I'll worth it. it. And I will tell you, for that price that it costs, it's definitely worth it for just the read alone. Yes. Next one we are talking about on the reader bus section is that Scout comic. And we're talking about Everglade Angels number one. Yeah. So now, you know, this is a book that has gotten some serious buzz. Um, you know, it, it comes from the writer of Happy Death Day. So you've got that natural, uh, you know, horror uh, Hollywood tie-in. A lot of rumors of, uh, of um, option for this one right off the bat. Um, you almost have to be careful because Scout has almost too many rumors of, of option with some of their new release books. And Scout was releasing multiple books this week. But this was the clear winner. There's a lot of great exclusive variants. Um, you know, I think that we saw Frankie's Comics.com, our channel sponsor. They released an uh, exclusive variant for this book. Amazing. Sold out. Um, as well as our brand new uh, sponsor working with the channel, BlackCapeComics.com, who has a variant, exclusive variant available right now at BlackCapeComics.com. We'll make sure we put the link in the description where you can get that. Um, but this one has got a lot of buzz. They also dropped a secret variant late where it's, it's a play on the first, the cover A, where it looks more like a VHS um, box. So I think that it's really hitting on that kind of 80s nostalgia that both you and I like. Um, so this is a, it seems to be a successful series. Yeah, this is one I picked up. I'm actually really anxious to read the story. It kind of has that a spit on your grave type feel to it to me. I always like those revenge mm -hmm. type uh, stories. But yeah, if you guys have read this, let us know. What do you guys think about this? Keeping with horror and keeping with independence, we are switching back over to Boom. And we're talking about that something is killing the children number eight. We are eight issues into this story. This he continues to be a great story. We always talk about how great that character is, right, with Erica Slaughter. But this one also had additional buzz with that Jeff DeCall variant with it as well, right? Yeah, and the cover art for the Jeff DeCall variant is amazing. But let's be honest, Jeff DeCall is like an artist who's out there, right? He's done a lot of work. Um, I don't want to say he's not a great artist, but his books haven't really penetrated the secondary market. 
So I think putting it all on Jeff to call is almost too much. I think people are not paying attention to a trend that is going on. I'm going to make a dangerous comparison here, Brian, and I'm fully aware that this is a dangerous comparison. But I think Something's Killing the Children of any independent book that I've seen has the best opportunity to be the next Walking Dead. And you knew I was going there. You knew I was going there. So this is the thing, right? We've all been waiting for what independent series is the next Walking Dead, right? What is the next one that is going to... First off, you have to understand about Walking Dead, it's not just an incredible TV show. Before it became an incredible TV show, it was a comic series that just continually increased in sales. We talk about this all the time. Issue number one comes out and there's a 50% drop off in sales. And then that drop off tends to continue all the way through issue four. So you're getting another 50% between issue two and three. You're getting another 50% between issue three and four. And I know that for some of you, this seems like inside baseball, we're talking about you know print run numbers. And this is the business side of comics, but these are the things you need to know if you're gonna be able to project the future and see trends in what's going on right now. What we're seeing with something's killing the children is that all started to happen. And then the trend started going in the positive direction. Sales numbers have increased for this title. Demand for this title has increased. More and more people read the first volume trade and are now on board late. This is causing back issues to spike. We're seeing all those FOC variants that previously were just cover price books starting to spike the $20 levels for issues like four, five, six. Now we're seeing these one in 25 incentives become like crazy in demand. There is a thing happening with this book. And I know that what I just said is going to make a lot of you laugh at me. A lot of you tell me I'm crazy. A lot of you tell me I'm a boom homer. A lot of you say a lot of those things. And you know what? To a certain extent, you may be right. But look, we've been looking for a book that's the next one. And every time we've been looking for that book, we've been basing our beliefs on how great a book is. And there's a lot of books that were great. Outcast was great. Um, you know, a lot of the, the hot image titles of the moment you could pick your book um, have been amazing but they haven't taken it to that next level. I think this is the one that can do it because it's, it's, we talk about a great character. It's based on one great character. And there's already that Netflix vehicle built in with that first look deal with Boom, as well as the fact that Boom is working with other streaming service publishers to get work on other streaming service networks beyond just the Netflix deal. So Boom Studios is, is making moves. And I think this is a trend that we're going to see continue. There's a new story arc starting in issue number 11. And we've already heard from Boom Studios that there is a lot of interest in demand on this title. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe people might say you're a Boom Homer. And I'll say, yep. But I'll also say this. Show me one other independent publisher right now that's doing or putting out the consistency that boom is doing as well. Yes. Something's killing children. I don't think you, you can ask anyone that's reading it. And I don't think anyone will tell you that, yeah, that book sucks. Right. And that's the thing is I haven't met a person who doesn't like that book. The, everyone who initially argued with us when we talked about this book hadn't read it. And then once they read it, you flip them. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just invite anyone who's going to tell me I'm crazy to read this book. Yeah. But, you know, you mentioned Netflix and you talk about options. This next one we're talking about on the Reader Buzz has some of that news as well. But we're talking about Amazon. We're talking about Skybound. We're talking about Kirkman. And we're talking Oblivion Song. This is their big number 25 issue. Yeah, they went hard with this one. So you got multiple variant covers. J. Scott Campbell actually did a regular price variant cover for this book. And, uh, you know, it's cool to see that this title, this is a book I really like. Um, this is another one where I actually have really high hopes for. I think it could be a very big project. I think the concept of this is, is very much like Walking Dead in that it's big in scope and allows you to do a lot with it. Um, I, I, I think that sometimes people, especially investors, don't have the patience to wait out a property. But readers who have been reading the series have known that Oblivion Song has continued to keep the heat for more than two years. Um, and I think that is something that is going to continue. This is definitely that next big project from, from Robert Kirkman. Outcast didn't go the way he wanted. Um, Invincible is coming. We know that that's Outcast is still going on. That's the crazy thing. And I still hold out hope. It's like Savage Dragon. <laughs> yeah, I still hold out. I still hold out hope that maybe because that show wasn't bad, it was more of just. I think that was that was more on Cinemax. Is kept mixing up their that, lineup. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is and who watches Cinemax in 2020? 
I mean, that, that Cinemax lost relevancy beyond the era of Skinemax. Yeah. So the, the reality of the situation is, um, I think that that was just a flawed project. Yeah. If, he, if he had that show, same show debuting today on Amazon, I think it would be a hit. So I, I'm still hopeful for that property. I'm still holding on to my outcast number ones. Um, but I think that Oblivion Song has the ability to be far more than that. I think it's his next big project, his next big thing. Um, and, you know, we've talked about Oblivion Song number one. Um, but it, this, that's one of those things I think that's worth paying attention to is the series in general. It's, it's consistent reader buzz. It's a definitely a hit indie, and it takes a little while before you truly know. And that's why we're talking about something is uh, killing the children, because you, it takes a while to see that. You're talking about Cinemax, and you're talking about Amazon. One of the best shows that was on Cinemax that I believe is on Amazon right now is Banshee. If you haven't watched Banshee, you need to watch that. And that's going to wrap up the Reader Buzz section. That's always my favorite list. That's always my favorite part of this list every week because everyone wants to talk about the sexy first appearances or the variant buzz, the Reader Buzz when you get into the meat and potatoes, and you're talking about great stories, great creator teams, and great publishers. But with that being said, we're going to go right now into that variant buzz section. And the first one kicking off the variant buzz, we are talking about Bitterroot number nine. They have been killing it with these homage variants. And this time we got that New Jack City, right? Yeah. Amazing homage variants from properties we don't see getting homaged. Um, at just a time when it makes sense, right? We're, we're, in, a, we're in a time period where putting out these great classic black films, getting them homage from a, a creative team, um, telling a story that is, you know, driven from the African American experience in a fantasy world. But um, it, it, these books are just playing extremely well on the market. People are loving them. People love these movies. People love this series. And I know it sounds like we're just putting over independent comics, but this is another property where I could not be more bullish about. We know that a movie is coming. I expect it to be a big hit. Um, if you've never read this book, I implore you pick up that first volume of the trade. You will be hooked. This is a great series. I think we're only going to continue to see more greatness come from it. And I think the fact that they found a niche with these variants is exposing a lot of people to a series they weren't otherwise paying attention to. Yeah, and we often talk about buying and selling as sets. These will definitely make a great set, but it'll make those earlier issues harder when they were actually one in ten incentives, right? Yeah, yeah. They, a lot of the earlier ones were real, real difficult. Um, they were one in ten incentives. They started to make the problem, the mistake of allowing the incentives to be second printed when people were the demand was there. They stopped doing that and then instead made them regular price to cover variants. So they try, they've tried to listen to the market and do what they want to do. Um, but you know, again, if you're looking for all the information on exclusive variants, check out exclusivevariants.com. But uh, he, right now, if you're looking for the second print for the Do the Right Thing variant, which was a 1 in 10 variant, which sold out and was gone, Heroes Aren't Hard to Find has the exclusive on the second print cover of that, and it's available on their website right now. The next one we're talking about variant buzz, we're talking about Hawkman number 25. We're talking about that Gerardo Zafino variant. Yeah, so this one got some late buzz, and it's funny because I put it on the list. It's amazing. It's a great cover. But Zafino is also doing every cover b so yeah i saw i kind of i kind of i think it's just people just haven't it, it it caught some people's attention some reposts um because that was my you and i have talked about hawkman for over a year yeah from step and side check to yoon to in Hyuk Lee to i mean the biggest artists in comics have done cover b's for hawkman they've been some of the most incredible cover b's this is another one where if you're a variant art collector, you just love like really dope variant art. Or if you're a Hawkman fan, please go back and look at the cover bees that have come post rebirth for, from this character, because these, they are outstanding. So this is a home run cover. It's amazing. It's great, but it's, it's consistent with what you're getting from this Hawkman. Yeah, series. Month in month out on Zafino's. Whoever is the editor of, of Hawkman, because yes, these Zafino's are great. But they, they've gone through about five artists in 25 issues, and they haven't had a bad variant yet. I'm telling you, any of you out there, tell me a DC series that is, that is beating this one. I don't, think it, I don't think it's happened. I think the best art has been on Hawkman, and I think that's crazy. 
And the last one we're talking about on the variant buzz, this is one we talked about on our final order cutoff show, the last call. We're talking about that Sonic 2020 annual, that one in 10 incentive variant. So yeah, we talked about this Sonic annual when we were talking on the last call show when this book came up on FOC. And we said that this was one we did not see many people ordering 10 copies of, even just 10 copies, because it's it's a $8 cover price book. It costs $4 for stores to order it. They have to pay $40 to get a one in 10 incentive. And we didn't see a ton of stores doing that. And sure enough, that's the trend we've seen because there's only currently three listed on eBay. And if you want them, you're going to have to pay about $60 to get this book. There's been some sales in the $35 range, but prices have been all over the place. $35, $55, $60, $45. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that when people are listing it, they're the only ones listing it. Now, you know my strategy with IDW, Brian. If I'm the only one listing it, well, that price is $100 or more for sure. If I'm the only one on eBay, there's no competition. But people don't know how to play that game, so we're seeing kind of a fluctuation of price. But either way, there is a demand for this book. It's an amazing cover. It's a cool character. It's one that's been popular within the Sonic universe for a while, it, but not featured like this. And it's on a 1 in 10 incentive. I think this is one that's going to have some legs long term and is going to be tough to find. Yeah, you mentioned a key term right there, long term. I, this is one that I'd like to see how it plays out because Sonic is great, but it's weird because it's like some stay up there and then some seem to come down. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying this is going to do one way or another, but I'm going to enjoy watching it. I don't have a dog in the fight. I didn't get this and I'm not going after it at that price. So if it were to come down, I might pick it up. But I'm like you said, I'm interested to see how this plays out. With that, that wraps up the variant buzz section, and we're going to go now into Jack's long-term play. And this was in multiple sections of the list again this week. We've had a trend for the past couple weeks where the long-term play has been appeared in those first appearances of Reader Buzz, Variant Buzz. But this was another great book this week. I enjoyed reading this, and we're talking about that deceased dead planet number one. Yeah, so I... A lot of people are going are gonna to be surprised probably when they saw this book on the list on SimplemansComics.com. Um, again, the home of the Bolo list, SimplemansComics.com. I think people were probably a little thrown off because yeah, this book had great reader buzz and there's a lot of cool variants for this book. But I don't think people were thinking in terms of the possible long-term play and the investability in this. Now, this is written by Tom Taylor, who's the, um, again, we talked about, we've got that great Seven Secrets variant coming from Boom Studios, but he's also really become that next level famous through crafting this whole deceased storyline. Yeah, um, and he's killing it on Suicide Squad. Yeah, he's killing it on Suicide Squad. He's also the one who created all new Wolverine for Marvel, so the Laura Kenny Wolverine. So this is a guy with a track record of creating characters you, the comic community, love. But Deceased really brought him to another level. It allowed him to kind of show that he could kind of tell an insulated universe story. Beyond that, um, yeah, there's certainly been rumors about Deceased getting possibly its own television show or animated movie, um, something of that nature. But that's not even why I'm excited about this book. Continuity be damned, Brian. Universes be damned. Because we've seen the Jane Foster What If Thor book pop off when Jane Foster finally put on that armor. Now, you and I have talked for a long time about the need – to advance storylines, to have characters move on. And what we get in this is, to me, a glimpse of what 5G was supposed to be, which is a brand new Justice League. Damian Wayne as Batman, John Kent as a, as a Superman, and Cassie Summers as, a, as a, um, Wonder Woman. And, you know, to me, I think that is something that is under-talked about today on release day. Um, this is quite possibly... DC Comics ideal Justice League of the future. Yeah. And I look at this book and go cover A, where this team is featured prominently. Um, everybody's talking about the variants today. And don't get me wrong, there's some gorgeous variants. I love that movie poster homage. Um, the, the blank variant is very cool. But I believe cover A, long term, you talk about a lottery ticket, Brian. This is a long term lottery ticket. Okay. I, I, I don't doubt it. But this is one that if you put it aside, I think at the very least it's a Damien key in the vein of Batman 666. But at the, at the top end, you could be looking at the very first appearance of a Justice League that could exist in the near future. And I think it's going to be easier. There's another point I'm going to make. It's going to be easier to advance storylines once a Batman Beyond movie exists and people are used to on a large scale. Okay, Bruce Wayne gets old. Somebody else can wear the cowl, and it's not the worst thing in the world. 
Like, right, we still like it. So I think that's going to open up doors for this type of story. So as I was reading it, um, I became more and more excited. We talked about this with the original deceased when Damien put the cowl on. And we mentioned with that issue that it was a great long-term play. So any long-time Simpleman's Comics viewers, they know this is on brand with what we've been talking about with DC Comics. So when I saw this one, there were some other books that kind of initially had my attention as long-term play, one of which being that Sonic variant that we just talked about. Um, you know, uh, certainly uh, some of the other uh, heavy reader buzz books, some of the independent stuff. But, the, but I just think that Long term wise, I think that this is it could never be more than just a great reader buzz book. You could be buying it and it could just be a cover price book. But this is a book that out of nowhere, 10 years from now, could spike to astronomical levels when what happens in this book plays out in any other form of media. And it may not take 10 years. This could be a one to three year play. This could be a five year play. We really don't know. But that's why this week, this is the long term play of the week, specifically cover A, guys. That's what I'm, that's what I'm, I'm pitching because that's what's got the cover appearance. And uh, that's the one I think that people are paying the least amount of attention to as per usual. So that's the best play. You got to zig when others zag. Yeah, he's talking cover A. We do have all of the covers on the screen right now, but great long term play. He says long-term, but I enjoyed it also for the read this week. I think DC stories have always been consistent. I don't think they get the right attention that they deserve because a lot of people like the flashy objects such as Venom and a lot of those Marvel. We, we also talk about some of those great independents. But there's a lot of great stories in DC Comics right now. And if you haven't given them a chance, you might want to pick them up and just and read it. And if you are reading them, let us know in the comments. What are you guys thinking about that? And which one is your favorite DC book right now? But with that being said, there is the Bolo list for this week. Again, this list also comes from you, the viewer, you on social media. Jack builds this list each and every week. Comment down below. Let us know what you guys think of the list. Let us know what your favorite read was. Let us know what your long-term play is. Jack, anything else before we go? Well, you know, I am Mr. Bolo. It's my job to let the comic community know what to be on the lookout for, and I'm letting you know. Be on the lookout for that brand new Simpleman's Comics variant dropping this Saturday, 7-11, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on SimplemansComics.com as well as the 616comics.com. Yes, it might be our first variant, but it damn sure won't be our last. Oh, no. So much more heat to come. This is Brian Jack with Simpleman's Comics. Go order that variant. Okay, all right.